black bandana to black martial artists. Yeah, it's time for Black Mark Picks. I'm your host, the master of Negro Jitsu, Lil Ross Stephan. Today, I'm joined by my co-host, Divine Prodigy, and we're here to bring you all the tops and picks and plays for UFC Apex Woodley versus Burns. Um, as always, this podcast is presented by NegroJitsu.com. During the coronavirus pandemic, I didn't know how people were going to be paying and shit like that, so I just uh, kind of ended the premium content for a while. But I think next week, we're going to crank up the premium, the full premium content at NegroJitsu.com. Just go over to NegroJitsu.com, subscribe now, get ready for next week. Um, prices start as low as $3 a week, um, $10 a month, and... Uh, Shit, I forgot the prices. But go over to NegroJitsu.com, check it out. Premium product, get signed up, and get ready for the Millie Maker. We're going to be bringing premium content back for the Millie Maker. Um, anyways, let's get into this car. We have 11 fights. We've got a replacement for, uh, mute yourself, Travis, for a late replacement for Daniel Rodriguez. And, um... It's going to be a very interesting card, to say the least. Divine Prodigy. Oh, disclaimer. Do not trust anything on this card. All these fights were made on short notice. We don't know who's in what shape. So, trust nothing. Like, we can say, oh, under normal circumstances, this should happen, that should happen. These are not normal circumstances. Trust no situation um, all of these are, are highly questionable fighting conditions. We don't know what kind of shape these guys are in. Uh, even the, the late notice replacement, Gabriel Green, he could be in better shape than the original slated fighter, Dane Rodriguez, to fight. We just don't know. And so that's why I'm saying be careful with this card. It is volatile like all the coronavirus cards are. They're just made on too short notice. Divine Prodigy, what do you think of this card? Um... I feel like this is this is a call where, it, like you said, there's there's too many there's there's a lot of rule. certain ways that the matchups can go. Like it's pretty much it's it, it's kind of like a toss up. It's literally a toss up card. There can only be maybe one, maybe sure sure fire match that you're actually sure about, but the rest, literally either one can win. There's not like any okay, um, this, this guy should not lose, period, on, on this card, really. Um, they're all toss-ups. Uh, you, you have to do your research pretty much, but even then the research may fail you. We never know what the type of wrinkles or you know, new, new things are being added during this COVID time. So the card, though, in itself should be a pretty exciting one. So we'll, we'll get into it. Okay, let's jump right into it. Our first fight tonight will be Chris Gutierrez versus Vince Morales. And um, I really... Oh, ooh, another key piece of information. This fight card will be taking place in the 25-foot octagon, not the 30-foot octagon. So, that changes things because uh, there won't be as much room to move around here. So, I don't... Let me look here. We don't have, well, you know, let's see. Jamal Hill is at 205, but I guess they switched to the 25 foot octagon. Whoa, no. Uh, even off in Sakai is a heavyweight fight in that small octagon. So, this is a small octagon, so that's something to really be aware of. Anyway, let's go to our first fight Chris Gutierrez versus Vince Morales, 145 pounds. Gutierrez coming in at $8,300. Miss Morales coming in at seventy nine hundred dollars, and I'm not exactly sure about a finish in this fight. I like Chris Gutierrez as a fighter. I was very impressed with his performance. Uh, was it against the Brazilian uh, Raoni Barcelos? And since his initial performance, he has been what I kind of thought he was. He's got strong boxing. He's just well rounded. It's a good fighter. I like Chris Gutierrez a lot. Uh, I like his technical efficiency. Vince Morales, um, uh, I don't know. I I can't necessarily say he's a bad fighter. I mean, he got uh, a loss to Yudong Song, uh, Benito Lopez, and then a win over Iman Zahabi. I uh, 
It's a respectable record and respectable performances. I'm going to take Chris Gutierrez. I like his technical efficiency a little more. From a DraftKings standpoint, I don't like this fight. But maybe that's why you play it. It should have low ownership. It won't be popular. It won't be more popular than Ivanov and Sakai. It won't be more popular than some other fights in this price. Let's see. Um, it's Woodley Burns and that. Nah, nah kind of. Kind of, sort of, in a way. No, not really. That's, uh, it won't be as popular as Quarantillo versus Carlisle. It won't be as popular as... Um, I don't know if it'll be as popular as Hill versus Brave. So, yeah, I, I'm picking Grusty Ayers to win, but I'm not extraordinarily high on this fight, which could be the reason why you should play one of these fighters, because that give you a big, big edge over the field with only 11 fights. You want to differentiate your lineups. Divine Prodigy, what do you say, think about this fight from DraftKings' perspective? Um, I literally don't know. This literally should be a 50-50 fight. Um, I really do not know who I picked to win. I think if you if you look at it from a betting perspective, um, Morales, I think when he was like, uh, what, plus 170 or anything like that, anything like that was, was definitely a good play. Yet at the same time, um, I, do, I do think I'm going to pick Chris Gutierrez just to do everything that Vince Morales can do, but just a tiny bit better. Is, um, I don't like this fight for DraftKings. I don't really like this fight to even watch this fight, honestly. I mean, of course, I'm going to watch it, but I, I, I wouldn't even, I, I don't even know where I would go in the betting with this, unless uh, besides maybe the fight goes to decision type prop, but even then, that might be too much because we don't expect the finish, um, and I'm sure Vegas doesn't expect the finish, so I don't like the fight. Um, like I said, for DraftKings purposes, I wouldn't bother touching them um, 80, what was that, like 8,300? I don't know. I don't even know their prices, honestly. I know they're in the 8,000s. They're in that mid-range level that we want to, that we like to target sometimes, but I don't think this fight is worthy of it. Um, so yeah, I pretty much do not know who's going to win this fight. I'm going to lean Chris Gutierrez. I will not win this fight, but I will plug it in. LaRaw, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta be, you gotta, um, know that next week will be the UFC's first Millie Maker for DraftKings. Somebody's going to win a million dollars, okay? Okay? Or part of it. But yeah, I just had to plug that in. I'm I, I already talked about that. I don't give a damn. I said it again. Yeah, I'm bringing premium content at NegroJitsu.com back for that uh, card. But anyway, uh, let's go to our next fight. We got Casey Kitty versus Luis Smoker. Casey Kitty at $9,100. Luis Smoker at $7,100. And I like Casey Kitty all day. I think that... Uh, that um our guy uh Smoker is uh he's a decent fighter but we kinda know who Smoker is. He's strong I think the strongest part of his game is his grappling. Um it's not necessarily that exceptional though. If you look at his rec record against the elite grapplers, or even just very good, like Tim Elliott, Ray Borg lost. Uh, he knocked out Ben Dwyer. Oh, uh, Patty Holahan. He he wins over a certain level of fighters, and he also loses over a certain level of fighters. And Casey Kittle, Kitty is a he's a promising prospect in, in this division, man. And I just. I like Casey Kitty. I don't think Luis Smoker has anything for him at, at in, in any way. Like I don't think he can outstrike him. I definitely think he's not taking him down to the mat. I don't think he's taking him down to the mat. I don't see that. Um, I just hmm, I don't see Luis Smoker's route to victory. Now the price on Casey Kitty is high to pay. Uh, but I'm thinking that his biggest advantage, so he's ninety one hundred dollars, is his grappling, and I'm thinking that you know it's it's, it's that I think that's a route that he could use to win, but he doesn't have to, and if he does it, he might not meet that ninety one hundred dollar value price. So there's some fighters that I like over Casey Kitty in this price range that are more I think uh, consistent or stable plays. To just plug in your lineups, but I do like Casey Kitty a lot. I do not like Louis Smoke. I do not play the play the. Um, I don't see his route to victory. This is this is not the type of fighter he wins against. Um, 
he did pick up a bunch of wins outside the UFC, so don't get into that. Sh all those wins you see in the road by Luis Smoker. But, um, yeah, I like Casey Kitty here a lot. I just don't know if he beats that $9,100 price tag. He has a great chance, too, though. Divine Prodigy, what do you think of this fight? Um, Me, personally, I think you already said it. I think Casey Kinney absolutely blows Louis Smoker out the water. Um, i like to see Casey Kinney drop back down to 125, but I guess he's comfortable at 135. Um, I feel like just Casey Kinney uh, can pretty much dictate where this fight goes and pretty much be the better man no matter if it's standing on the ground of course you said smoker has that uh his his mo the mo best part of his game is on the ground however we've seen casey kenny handle you know that part of the ground game and show that he's smooth and can transition with the best of him when he fa when he fought ray borg um of course that being said louis smoker is still dangerous he is still like a wild card if if he's if he's on, it's pretty much he can he can beat, you know, like some of the top 10, top five in the division. However, I mean, of course, in his last performance against Ryan McDonald, I don't really put too much stock into it because Ryan McDonald, one of the last time we've seen him other than that last time, um, he was coming back off a, a, a lengthy, a lengthy time of not being in the UFC. So, I mean, like I said, Casey Kenny, he's a dog. He's going to fight. Um, I think he can pretty much win it anywhere. And I like Casey Kenny in cash. And I kind of like him in GPP because I think he, he can be sneaky. I think if this fight does hit the ground, of course, that might be one of the only ways he can pay off the 9100 price tag. But I, I think he's a sneaky option to do so. I think maybe most people might think, uh, Casey Kenny, 9100 too much. I think, you know, Casey Kenny can absolutely put up 91 points, even if it's a decision victory. So I like him in all four matches. I like Casey Kenny. I just am not sure that he'll get his grappling going. To win this fight. I, I think he wins it wherever it goes, personally, but I'm just not sure about how how dedicated he'll be to racking up the DraftKings points for us on this car. Let's go into our next fight. We got Tim Elliott versus Brandon uh, Roy Val. Roy Val coming in at $7,500. Elliott coming in at $8,700. Roy Val looks like a, a super promising prospect. Um, I really like him um he seems to have all the tools he seems to have a great submission and grappling game i saw him win his uh last fight in just a few seconds very impressive performance and you know tim elliott is a big risk taker but the one thing about tim elliott fights is you just got to get tim elliott or his opponent they just rack up too many points he's a very weird grappler but Tim Elliott, I don't know if he's ever scored like a hundred under a hundred in a win. And it's been so long since he's had a big win that you know people forgot that Tim Elliott is a lock for a hundred plus points in wins, usually. And I don't necessarily know if that'll definitely be the case here, but I'm thinking it will. And I think him or Roy Val is going to score exceptionally well. So I want both sides of this fight. Tim Elliott hasn't won much in his past 10 or so UFC fights. It's because of the level of competition he's been facing. Absolutely elite. Tim Elliott is an elite grappler, though. Roy Val, 70. Um, Roy Val is, uh, like, like I said, all these guys are coming in on short notice. Tim Elliott is always, also, he's a big risk taker. It can uh, the fight can change any given second whether it's him or his opponent gaining the momentum. I you got to get one side of this fight. I like this fight in every lineup. I think it's going to be on the winning lineup. Um, Elliot is probably the sneakier play because when people look at this DraftKings log and see all these L's, they're going to be turned off. But they forget Tim Elliott. He's scoring over a hundred in the win, well over a hundred. He always has. Roy Val, I think he scores well in the win. Great fight. I'm targeted it heavily. Divine Prodigy, what do you say? Yeah, I mean, you pretty much hit the nail on the head here. I think, you know, of course, Tim Elliott is getting up there in age. He's probably losing a step. However, um, it seemed with this Roy Val guy, it seemed like every time he's, like, taking a step up. I know he's coming from LFA. He was their champion. But every time he's taking like a, a sort of a like step up, he hasn't really you know performed to the task. Of course, in this fight, Tim Elliott would seem to be 
well on his way to I think it's kind of his fight to win or lose pretty much. I think um he, he he can he can grind out that decision, but we know that even in an Elliott decision victory, he still has the potential to, like you said, put up hundred points. With Roy Val, um he's a he's a pretty big flyweight too. I know Tim Elliott usually has that size, but Roy Val will pretty much negate that. Um Roy Val on the ground is superb. Um, but we know that Tim Elliott can hang in there with the scrambles. But of course, like you said, you see all these submission losses on Tim Elliott's record, and that's the that's the reason to take a flyer on Roy Val um, for a submission win, potentially in round one. Now, of course, when you hear submission win and all the boxing game, and of course, the game is the king and uh, draft king. So this fight, I think, no matter who you have. Who, no matter who wins, it has to be on your lineup. If Roy Val wins, it has to be there. If Tanelli wins, it has to be there. Because this fight will probably just be a bunch of scrambles, advances, reverses. If you're on fan duel submission attempts, like it, 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 this fight is, is, is probably going to be gold for that. But nonetheless, I do think that should Tim Elliott survive that round one, you know, not getting caught into any submission, any tricky submission while, you know, everyone is still, you know, uh, non-slippery and dry and stuff like that, and the the, the, the chokes and stuff like that are, are tighter, then I think um, as it goes on, he'll just p- apply more pressure and get a little bit more wild and, and you know, be more effective in the scrambles over Roy Val. Um, but we'll, we'll have to see. It doesn't seem like Roy Val has any type of cardio issues as well. We know Tim Elliott pretty much. Uh, yeah, but we're on the coronavirus camp, so we don't know yeah, what. Yeah, yeah. But Tim Elliott doesn't slow down, so we'll, 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 we'll see. But I like you, like you said, this fight has to be played. No matter who wins, it has to be played. But I lean Tim Elliott to come out of here and avoid the submission spots and and uh, show and welcome Roy Val to the UFC. Mm. Let's go with uh, our next fight. We got Jamal Hill versus Clinton Abreu. Jamal Hill at eighty four hundred dollars. Abreu at seventy eight hundred dollars. Jamal Hill. Was robbed in his last fight, pretty much. I thought he won that fight against. Uh, well, no, no, no. I'm thinking of somebody else. Yeah, but so he beat Stozik. He beat Stozik. I'm thinking of the other black guy. But uh, Jamal Hill is a well-rounded fighter. Uh, put up a lot of significant strikes in his fight against uh, Stozik. Clinton Abreu is. Um, I'm thinking of Jamal Emmers. I'm tripping here. Watching too many fights. But, um, Clinton Abreu has losses to Gam Satov and Akalayev. Did not do or score very well in those fights. Has a win over Sam Alvey. I don't necessarily see the extraordinary potential for a high score in any of the, the, either of these fighters, but Jamal Hill did land, um, 101 significant strikes in three rounds against Darko Stosic. So that's some hell of a significant strikes landed per minute. At $8,400, I think you take a shot at that. I don't know if I'm trusting either of these guys to win. Low-level fight on coronavirus camp. If you play one side of it, probably get both sides of it. Um... But Jamal Hill is intriguing to me because of his activity rate at $8,400. That's about all that's intriguing to me. I can't trust anything else about fighters who are so inexperienced and uh, so such on a low level. So, um, yeah, Divine Prodigy, what are your thoughts on this fight? I say if you play Hill, you play Abreu too, just to be safe. You don't have to play him even, but, you know, I would just cover my ass because... Neither of these guys, we don't have enough sample size to just hang our hats on them yet. Of course, um, with this fight, it's it's the classic striker versus grappler matchup. Uh, you know that Jamal Hill wants to keep this fight standing. You know that Clitz and Abreu in a perfect world wants to take this fight to the ground, probably get a submission. Um, You can really keep it short and sweet. I think if you're going to play this fight, you have to play both sides. I don't necessarily know if Jamal Hill can get a a finish, but we know that his activity rate, I know in his last fight he had over, well over 100 significant strikes in the three-round bout against Stozik. His activity rate is there. Um, cardio seems to be there. He was still, you know, putting up those strikes even 
after getting taken down. But that's the point where we come to, of course, Stozik, who's not really a grappler, was six of nine on his takedowns. Um, now, Clinton Abreu isn't really... Uh, he, he, we, we know he wants to get it to the ground, but we haven't really seen him use any type of good offensive wrestling to get the fight to the ground. I think he more so probably relies on his opponents to get it there. And I think also with the Stozic takedowns, those are more power takedowns. And I don't know if, if Abreu has that power, those type of power takedowns in his arsenal to get Jamal Hill to the ground. But we know that this is exactly where Clinton Abreu wants it. Um, of course, that being said, I'm going to, I'm going to lean Jamal Hill. I'm going to hope. We, we, Clinton Abreu, hope. he's a black belt. Yeah. 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 Um, That's right. And he's a pretty elite one, but he fought Ankalaev and his other, these other Russian wrestlers in these last fights, and that's kind of been canceled out. So that's, yeah, that's gravy. I forgot all about Abreu's black belt because he hadn't been able to use it recently. But at the, at the same time, his offense, it, we don't, is his offensive wrestling that good? I mean, Look at all the people he's fought. Sam Alvey's wrestling takedown defense Yeah, we know. Sam impeccable. Alvey's takedown defense is crazy. crazy. Because he, he Team Quest, Dan Henderson, Randy Couture, all those guys. And Kalaev is an elite wrestler. And then Gamzatov is a wrestler, too. So we haven't been able to see Abreu Lou use that black belt, which is why I forgot about it and its, and its significance. Abreu is an excellent play for that reason. He's got an elite skill set. Yeah, but I apologize. If, it's, if, it's, if he can't get his wrestling going again, though, if he cannot get his wrestling going, like I said, I don't know if he has the strength. Maybe he might do a trip takedown, something like that. But if he cannot get his wrestling going, it's going to be a long day for for Clinton and Brady in that cage against Jamal Hill. One of these cl- uh, cl- uh, smaller cages might. This smaller cage, of course, is the place for a grappler. Like you know, they, they get what five less feet of space to to work uh, to work with, and that way, if their opponent, you know, that we're, we're in a situation the cage may not be there. You know, now the cage is there. You can shoot up on the cage and, you know, try to work your takedown or something like that. But, of course, we'll have to see how it plays out. Um, you know, with, with Jamal Hill being taken down six of nine times by Darko Stojic, like we said, who isn't a wrestler, more so just power takedown, I, I, I can definitely see the reason for playing Abreu. But at the same time, I think Jamal Hill, um, if he just focuses this camp, honestly, he just needs to focus this camp. What camp? There is no camp. That's another thing. What, what, so however, Brady has his black belt. I'm changing. How, I'm changing the stance. How, however he works out, however he does it, whatever team he has, as long as they can get someone in there who's just constantly shooting on him, of course, practice is different than game time, of course. It's always different than game time. But he just needs to work his takedown defense in the open area, which I don't think Clinton Bray would get an open t- an open area takedown. Even Darko Stojic's takedowns was not against the, the just in the open space, but against that cage, he needs to work the underhooks, all that up against that cage because it, it was kind of easy. But like I said, it, it was they were power takedowns. So it, it's this is one of those fights where it, it, it'll get tricky too. But I like Bray. I like Bray. He has the least skill set of the two guys. I just neglected it because we hadn't been able to see it in his last couple fights against people with elite takedown defense that Jamal Hill does not have. A <sighs> break. I think I might pick him by submission. Oh, yeah. Let's go into the next fight. We got Daniel Rodriguez versus Gabriel Green. I like to talk about this fight in great detail. Essentially, at this point, Daniel Rodriguez, $7,300, is the chalk du jour. Um, and. Rightfully so. Then Rodriguez is $7,300, and at this point, he is a, last time I checked, he was a negative 350 favorite, but at this point, he is still a negative 350, negative 357, negative 341, negative 400, negative 375. So he is well over negative 300 as a favorite, which would make him just barely... He's almost the biggest favorite on the card. Roosevelt, well, no, Mackenzie Dern is negative 440. Roosevelt Roberts is negative 360. So the third highest favorite on the card. That means his price is off. According to Vegas odds, boy, about, shit, what, 
1800 1700 $1,800? That's an extraordinary discount that everybody's going to be on. The problem with that is I went and watched Gabriel Green's film. And I don't see how you can necessarily be extraordinarily confident in the ability of Rodriguez to dominate Green. Um, I mean, one thing that I was really taken aback by that I, I was really big on against uh, Kevin Holland was that, you know, Dan, Tim Means took Danny Rodriguez down like it, it was just nothing. That concerned me. Especially against a guy like Kevin Holland. Now we got Gabriel Green, who seems to be more of a striking type guy. And I don't know. I just don't think Dan Rodriguez is that much better than Gabriel Green from what I've seen on film. He had a somewhat impressive performance against Tim Means. A very impressive performance. His boxing looked very good. But I don't see why you can be that so confident that he's supposed to come in here and starch um, Gabriel Green like the odds would suggest. I, I don't see that type of odds value on him. Gabriel Green is $6,800. Daniel Rodriguez is $7,300. We saw the last time this happened on the last card. Uh, Travis, who was that that was priced low? Giga Chikadze. And Giga, did he take a split? He beat the hell out of his opponent. He did not take a split. Okay. Okay, my bad. Okay, but he went to a decision. All right. Um, this fight has a great chance to go to the decision. I would get some Gabriel Green there just to pivot off the field because Giga almost didn't end up on a winning lineup. He only scored like 73 points. If Dane Rodriguez comes in here and doesn't light it up, you know, that'll be interesting. But at the same time, if he does light it up at 7,300, you'll need him. But it'd just be an interesting leverage on a field where, what do you think uh, What do you think Rodriguez's ownership is going to be at this price? The same as Giga Chikazi's was. He's, you said he's minus 350, sir. He, he's he's going to be well over 50% off. If not, 48 to 52%. And it probably, uh, well, Giga Chikazi's on the list. When they fought, it should have been more. But I'm going to say 48 to 52% for sure. I would still be contrarian here and get some Gabriel Green. Just because you automatically beaten, his ownership could get as high as like 70%. That wouldn't be crazy because this has never been seen before. When Eric Anders was a uh, $7,600 fighter against Rafael Natal and barely being a favorite, you know, his ownership was astronomical. What is Daniel Rodriguez going to be at negative $350 and $7,300? Like, if he doesn't win. And there's a great chance he, because who is Daniel Rodriguez? We don't know. We know he beat up Tim Means, but Tim Means is kind of beat up. Tim Means doesn't have power to finish fights. Tim Means can be stopped. We know that. Um, He's a great skill fighter, but he just doesn't have the power to finish fights and shit. So he gets stopped sometimes. Um, And then he doesn't have the best chance. You know, Tim Means is... He's, he's human. Too human to be a champion. He's got championship skills. But Rodriguez here, man, I'm not trusting him. Short notice fight. Fighter that doesn't have that many fights. These are two unknowns. I kind of like pivoting off of him sometimes in lineups. But definitely, I think you should have great exposure to him. Because it's almost like if he wins convincingly... He's super necessary. If he doesn't win convincingly, that makes things more interesting as well. But it just all depends on a lot of things. I would just, anybody that's going to be 70% on with only 11 fights, I'd like to kind of differentiate myself in different ways. I don't know if Daniel Rodriguez has got to differentiate from, but what elite skill set does he have 
that we're confident that he's going to blow up the slate at seventy three hundred dollars. His boxing looked great against Tim Means, but that's not enough for me. You know, Divine Prodigy, what do you say about Daniel Rodriguez being on that astronomical race this weekend? Um, we I saw it work. We saw it work last week. Um, I, I, we're gonna see it work this week. Of course, this week I think it's definitely closer. I mean, this green guy is not bad at all. He 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 is not bad at all. And Daniel Rodriguez, you know, for for all of his, you know, for his great performance against Tim Means, we know that Tim Means was on, you know, the pretty much he he's on his way out already. We know the defic- the deficiencies in Tim Means' game. And of course, when he was uh, when Rodriguez was facing Tim Means, Tim Means was a con- a, a convincing favorite. So I mean that that maybe it was for name value, but that had obviously proved that people didn't have that much confidence in Rodriguez to get that win. And of course, he came in there, he took advantage of the takedown defensive means. Uh, standing, he was pretty sharp. So I mean, you, when you take all those into account, that's what makes him a minus three fifty. Then you got this guy coming in from. You know, uh, a new pr- uh, from his old promotion stepping up short notice. But like I said, when you look at the tape, this green guy, he, he isn't bad at all. He, he can definitely he can definitely fight. Um, I think, like I said, I don't think Rodriguez should be minus 350. I definitely don't think he should be minus 350. But at the same time, when you're 7,300 on DraftKings and you should be the favorite, I'll agree he should be the favorite. Um, I think you take it. Even if he scores 73, you know, just the fact that that 7300 is pretty much an underdog or something like somebody you would have to hesitate with playing if it was a regular card or if he was facing kevin holland um you take that and you're like i don't have to worry about that no more i've turned 7300 a minus 350 favorite which means he should be the most expensive fighter on the card i've turned a minus 350 into a 7300 uh opponent which probably means it's probably plus 200 or something like that or maybe plus 170 so it's like if i have that and I can, you know, that gets me to the Mackenzie Derns, the 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 Roosevelt Ro- Roberts, the the Casey Kennys. You take it pretty much. That's that, and that's what's gonna happen here. Of course, uh, now me, of course, as far as the matchup goes, I'm gonna I'm gonna favor Rodriguez. I think his stand up is sharp. I think even if he wants to take this to the ground, he can take it to the ground. Um, but at the same time, like I said, this green guy, his stand up is pretty decent. His ground game is pretty decent. He actually mostly looks for, you know, submissions and stuff when he hits the ground too. So. He has skills. Now, this is just one of them situations where you have to be wary. This is a situation where, you know, Giga Chikadze, you, you, you win all in with Giga Chikadze. You know, it really didn't see him losing. I mean, Erwin Rivera is good, but he was stepping up. Um, if he goes back down in weight class, he will be game. Those shots he took and those shots he can give. But in this fight, I don't think it's that same situation. I think you can vi- you can viably p- play um uh, green and, and, and feel pretty decent about it, the fact that he, he just might get a win with this. But uh, I know what's going to happen. Like I said, 48 to 52% is going to be on ownership is going to be on Rodriguez. I think and it's going to be point, even higher than that, bro. At, I think it's going to be like 60 70. Yeah, at that point, you just have to, you don't even over you don't even overthink it. Of course, you can be contrarian if you have the money to be contrarian. But um, you don't overthink it. You just plug him in and then you figure out the rest of your lineup after you plug him in. Okay, I, I'm not necessarily just, I don't know if I feel comfortable with just plugging him in. I'd like some Gabriel Green, because Gabriel Green is looking like a decent fighter. I just don't like those odds. I don't like that ownership rate. And with, with kind of, you can kind of even play it even if you want, because you could just make the same lineups with Rodriguez as you do with Green. Um, you don't have to play it completely even. But I would get some good exposure to green just to get that leverage on the field. Zach could win you a slate, honestly. You know, it, there's no reason for Daniel Rodriguez to be on this 70. He doesn't have a black belt. He's not a world champion in anything. There's no reason for this. He doesn't. He's not a uh, a gimme to win this fight. Next fight up, we got uh, Shevchenko here. Antonio Shevchenko versus Kalen Chukagian. Shevchenko coming in at $8,500. Chukagian. Coming in at $7,700, and oh, I'm not a fan of this fight. Kaylin Chukagian fights are notoriously boring and stale. Uh, she's a little Holly Holm. She doesn't score well, and neither does her opponent. Um, yeah, Shevchenko shouldn't put up a great score against Chukagian. 
Shukajian shouldn't put up a great score against Shevchenko. But at $7,700, I guess she's interesting. With the Gabriel Green Rodriguez fight, I really don't see the point in rostering this. There's, there's no reason. No, I don't like this fight. I don't like the finishing upside. I'm just kind of staying away from it. I'd rather have Ivanov versus Sakai. I'd rather do. I'd rather do um, Hill versus Abreu. Especially in this small case, like I'm not on this fight at all. Devon Prodigy, what do you what do you say? Hold on, I'm, 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 what fight are we talking about right now? Shevchenko and oh. Chukagin. Well, okay, I've been waiting for this. My fault. My fault. My fault. Um, Chukagin Shevchenko. Um, now I know pretty much after Caitlin Chukagin got obliterated by Valentina, as we all knew was going to happen. Now you come in, you face her sister. Now, you, of course, you think the sister is the easier matchup. But, of course, you have to remember that, you know, Ant- Antonia is, is – she's training with Valentina. And of course, Valentina did fight Chukagin. I'm sure maybe for that camp, maybe they did research and looked at the tendencies of Caitlin Chukagin. doesn't really matter, of course. Um, but, you know, with Antonia training with Tevchenko each day on a daily basis, it's, it's inevitable that she's going to get better. She, she has to get better. Um, now, I know the knock on this one, of course, is that Chukagian, you know, coming in, she had a bit of a, a, a bit of a decent, like, wrestling background, and she will use her wrestling. But if you look at her fights, she does not. She probably doesn't even average one takedown attempt over 15 minutes. Um, and that, that's, that's cause for concern. You know, she, you know, she's usually making those, 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 those sounds when she strikes and, hit, and hits the air, sort of similar to Holly Holm or something like that, you know. Shevchenko with, with her hey and all that stuff like that you know she's making those sounds so you probably hear a lot of that especially with no one in the arena when this happens pretty much no crowd so you hear all those ex- extenuated sounds but you know Shevchenko is Antonia is a is a Muay Thai um fighter pretty much just like her her sister so she's gonna come in here probably look for the clinch I don't recommend uh Chukagian playing that clinch too much but she's going to come in here and look for the clinch. But I think I don't think those takedowns are going to be there for Chukagian like maybe people who are betting on her thinks it's going to be. Um, I honestly, like, of course, I don't really like this fight for DraftKings. We, we, we usually don't like women's fights. Some women's fights are better than others. This is one of those fights where it's kind of similar to that Vince Morales, uh, Chris Gutierrez type fight. But at the same time, uh, if we have to choose a pick, I think Antonia is going to uh, get the get the victory using her Muay Thai and a, and a stand up affair. And I think you know the Caitlin Chukagin should she very well should be coming in here looking for takedowns. But I don't think her her fight game plan or her fight IQ will allow her to. And even if she does, I think maybe in this case, Shevchenko will be um, ready for it. She'll be she'll be well prepared. Um, I don't think Chukagin is anything like a Roxanne Mata Mata Fiari with her. Her wrestling, where it's just you know she got some of that old old mom strength and it's just uh, relentless and aggressive. I don't think Ch- Chukagin has any of that, um, so I think Chachinko takes it, but I wouldn't play the fight at all. Yeah, I don't. I don't like this fight. Next up, we got Mackenzie Dern, ninety three hundred dollars for his hand of ciphers at sixty nine hundred dollars and. I'm intrigued by Miss Cyphers at $6,900 because I think that a lot of people will be on McKenzie Dern because they believe, they are of the belief that, um, you know, this girl, um, McKenzie Dern, is going to come in, take Hannah Cyphers down, and strangle her. McKenzie Dern doesn't have the wrestling to do that, though. And. When it comes to striking, I don't know if Hannah Cyphers isn't the better striker. Because Mackenzie Dern striking up to this point has been not so good. That's why she went to a split decision with Yoder. That's why she lost to Hebos. Um she did drop Amanda Bobby Cooper. She is a great athlete, you know, she is an elite level fighter. But ninety three hundred dollars for person that I don't know is going to come in here and choke the shit out of Hannah Cyphers immediately. I need 110 plus points and $9,300. I don't necessarily like that. I think exposure is warranted. 
it definitely could happen if this hits the mat it's about over the problem is Mackenzie Dern has not developed the skill set to take it to the mat and that's the problem with so many elite Brazilian Jiu Jitsu competitors with the coronavirus pandemic she's not even fit to do that so um yeah I don't necessarily like Dern here I like her but I don't I think she'll be over on I like Roosevelt Roberts I like um Casey Kenny uh, is there anybody else in this price range that I'm, I'm liking uh, I like the championship fight Woodley vs. Burns better I, I'm, I'm not so high on Mackenzie Dern although I think exposure is definitely warranted but I think her chances of not meeting value because if she listen if she does get a takedown and she strangles uh, Hannah Cyphers it probably won't be a lot of resistance to it Mackenzie Dern is an elite Brazilian Jiu Jitsu she's world class she's gonna take it to the mat pass advance to the dominant position and win and that's even in that situation that's only like a hundred some points and that's not enough to just be a plugger in like in cash I think she's relevant but that's if she can get it to the ground if she can't this fight is even um Divine Prodigy what do you say I like Hannah Cyphers better as the play I don't know how necessary she is with Rodriguez and Green on this, but yeah, I mean, I'm not so high on Mackenzie Dern at $9,300. I'm not liking Hannah Cyphers at all. Um, Hannah Cyphers is very tough. She's tough. She She's gritty. She'll stand in there and bang with you, but at the end of the day, um, she is who we who we think she is, honestly. Um, that re that he boss lost to, with, with Dern... Um, no, I don't think anyone pretty much seen that coming. Um, Hebas is uh, definitely showing new wrinkles. She's definitely like now, like she's looking like a monster. And then she gets Paige Van Zant next. That's gonna be crazy. But back to back to Dern. Um, the thing with this fight is that 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 small cage is exactly what's gonna help her in this fight. Um, Hannah Cypress has power, but I don't think it's it's not one punch knockout power. Um, well. She, Hannah Cyphers do got a little bit of power, I'm sorry. Well, she can hurt you, but she's not. I don't think she's going to put you out with one punch, regardless of the fact. Um, the main thing that I look for in this matchup is the fact that when Hannah Cyphers fought Angela Hill, Angela Hill, who we know is not a wrestler, she's a striker, repeatedly put Hannah Cyphers on the mat. Repeatedly. And with ease. With ease. Um, in a regular case, in a regular case, she put Hannah Cyphers on the mat. Now, if, if Angela Hill can put you on the mat, why in the world wouldn't someone like Mackenzie Dern, who knows that pretty much her stand-up isn't, isn't there yet, it's, it's pretty bad. Her stand-up isn't there. She's a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu um, you know, uh, champion on, uh, on the ground, elite skill set, like you just said. Well, those people with elite skill set have nothing else better to do than to figure out ways on, of putting their opponents on the mat. In this case, I don't think Hannah Cyphers will give any resistance. When she doesn't give any resistance, and it's a smaller cage, you know, maybe... Her back to that cage, she'd expected it to not be there. But when Mackenzie Derns gets her hands on her and gets a goes for a takedown attempt, Hannah Cypher's gonna go for that ride. Just like Angela Hill took her for that ride. And once she goes for that ride, Mackenzie Derns seems like she's a pretty a, a decently strong woman. Uh it's gonna be it's gonna be over from there. So I know you you're trying to give Hannah Cypher some love and I guess uh no, I really don't understand it. But at the same time, like I All said right, here's one point. If Mackenzie Dern does win this fight, she gets a takedown. It's like five, five points, points. Five points. A, a pass, maybe oh, another five. pass, and a strangle or that's arm six bar. Points. So that's six points. That's six points. You got, you got five ninety for the five points for the takedown. About ninety if we're going to draft kings. If it like happens in the first points, round, is it like three points each advance? I think. I think reverse was five. I think three points each advance. You said two advances, so that's five plus six. That's eleven. Plus ninety points for a first round win, that's that's a hundred and that's what a hundred and one right there. That's nothing. I, you take a hundred and one. You take a hundred and one for somebody that's ninety three hundred. That's nice, but I mean that's I don't think that's gonna win. It might be what's needed on this card. You think Roosevelt Rob is gonna do better? He could. I mean, I'm saying it's relevant. I just wouldn't plug Mackenzie Dern in like that because it's gonna be hard for her to meet value. Although she will, if the the Dane Rodriguez fight makes this 
very affordable now. Yeah, and and, and imagine if Hannah Cypress gets up and she puts her back down on the mat again, then at, at that point, it's really going to be over. I well, if, if the takedown doesn't happen, Mackenzie Dern could very well lose this fight. Angela Hill took Cypress down. Mackenzie Dern doesn't have as good a wrestling as Hill, does she? Hill has wrestling? I don't know. I mean, it's something. She's got that Muay Thai background. She does have trips and takedowns. Don't forget about that. Other than other than Hannah Cypress, when is Hill wrestling? She's got Muay Thai. They got takedowns and trips and shit. That wasn't the question. Other than Hannah Cypress, when has Hill shown any wrestling game in that octagon? Against who? I'm sure she's landed takedowns with her Muay Thai. She is a Muay Thai competitor. <laughs> They usually have really good grappling. Anyway, let's go on to um, Brock Weaver versus uh, Roosevelt Roberts here. We got Brock Weaver, uh, Roosevelt Roberts coming in at $9,200. Weaver coming in at $7,000. I like Roosevelt. I did not like what I seen from Brock Weaver in his last fight. I didn't even like what I seen him before. I think he's got a great personality. I think he's got an electric character that, that's great for the fans. But I... Don't see what there is in the octagon. Roosevelt Rocky Roberts has skills everywhere. He's got skills on the ground. He's got some real good boxing. I think he finishes his fight relatively early and scores really well. I love him at $9,200. Um, he's somebody that along... I, I like I like him a lot better than Mackenzie Dern. I just, I just like what he brings to the table. I think his striking is... is Scary. I think his submission game is scary. I think everything about Roosevelt Roberts, especially against Brock Weaver. Um, I'm loving Roosevelt Roberts in cash and GPPs. Divine Prodigy, what do you say? We don't have to talk about this fight too much. I mean, you've seen what happened in Brock Weaver's last fight. He was getting beat up. He got saved by an illegal knee. Um, Roosevelt Roberts, um, he started off his career pretty, 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 pretty decently. I mean, he ran into Vince from Hell Shell. And that that you know he lost that fight, got 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 beat up in that fight. But in this case, it's all situational. Uh, um, I don't I think he's going to be too much for Brock Weaver. I don't think he finishes. I will say that. But I think this is one of those those fights where even in the decision victory, um, even in the decision victory, I think Roosevelt Roberts can definitely outscore his price tag and put up uh, an immense amount of points with his grappling. Um, if he decides to go to it, if he if he just stays in strike strikes uh i don't think he, he'll put up much of a much of a um a good score at all but if he grapples with weaver i think he can pretty much have do whatever he wants on the ground honestly i don't know if he finishes though i think i'll give brock weaver credit for his toughness but um i like roosevelt roberts like you like roosevelt roberts um this should this should be his fight to win or lose but win pretty much <laughs> Let's go to our next fight. We got Billy Core and T.O. versus Spike Carlisle. And I love the chances. Uh, I love this fight because I think it's going to score a mess of points. Core and T.O. $8,600. Carlisle coming in at $7,600. I just think that, um, I think that Carlisle, I, I, I think that Core and T.O. should dominate the fight. I don't think Carlisle has too many skills, but he seems to have big power and finishing ability. So I like, um, I like uh, Carlisle from that standpoint, but I think Quarantillo dominates this with his wrestling. It's just the potential for Carlisle to strike at any moment. I mean, he finished with the Travis Brown elbows the last time. That was very impressive. And I think that's, that's he's kind of like Nico Price or somebody where it doesn't make sense how he wins, but you have to be aware that he could. And when he does, he's going to score big points. So I like Quarantillo better. That's my guy in this fight. But Spike Carlisle, I, I want to get exposure to him too. I just love this fight. I think it's going to be on the winning lineup. Um, because Carlisle, is, he's that type of fighter. He's either going to get dominated skill-wise or he's going to land a knockout. Devon Prodigy, what do you say? This fight has to be on your lineup. Um, it's pretty much a goal. Like, I, I like that comparison you made with Spike Carlisle and uh and, and Nico Price that that was a great that was a great one uh pretty much it seems like you know Spike Carlisle is one of those guys who can win and you don't really know how he pretty much did it um against Alon Cruz he kind of derailed that hype train 
Alon Cruz had a lot of hype. Spike Carlisle had enough of hearing that hype. Um, the only thing we know is Spike Carlisle has a lot of power, and no matter what, what limb he hits you with, it, one shot is all it pretty much takes with, with the type of power that he possesses in that weight class. Um, I was about to say something. Hold on, hold on. With the type of power he possesses, I know the, the one knock on Spike Carlisle is his, his, his cardio, pretty much. They say, you know, once he gets out that first round, uh, it's pretty much easy pickings. He pretty much is one of those guys who throws everything into his, into his you know, to his strikes. So with Billy Q, y'all know he had that one over Jacob Kilburn, which, I mean, it was impressive, but then again, who the fuck is Jason, Jacob Kilburn? Um, so with Billy Q, the, 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 I'm sure the way this fight will play out is if you survive that first round, the, the, the latter round, the second and third, Spike Collar will be pretty, you know, tired, and that's when Billy can work his game of the takedowns and looking for a submission. And that's honestly the route that I will go. I'm, I'm liking Billy Q like you're liking Billy Q, but at the same time, you have to you have to play Spike Carlisle. You have to play the Spike, but you have to play Spike, Spike Carlisle because if he wins, more than likely it's in that first round, and you would hate to to not you know play this fight when Spike Carlisle would be yet another underdog that wins. So you have let's say you go with Rodriguez and you go with Spike Carlisle, and they both win. Like the the the, um, the amount of real estate you have then to play with your lineup is going to be tremendous. So you would hate to not have this fight on there, but at the same time, um, I don't trust. I don't like trusting guys that don't have, have any cardio. Though I know he has that one punch knockout power. So, I'm like I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna favor Billy Q like you're favoring Billy Q. But um, you definitely gotta, it's, you gotta play both sides of this fight. You have to. You literally have to. Yes, I feel. I think that this, somebody's gonna blow up the slate. Probably Quantio, but. Um, because Carlisle is just weird, man. But that's why you gotta have that exposure. Because he's Nico Price. Those, those, Travis Brown, he wasn't winning any of that fight until those elbows. <laughs> and that's my point. Let's go into our next fight. I, I love this fight. Augusto Sakai versus Bogoy even all in the small octagon. They are heavyweights in the small octagon. Sakai, $8,200, even off $8,000. You know the raw step is rule. If it's priced even, guys, what should you do? Play it even. Um, I'm picking Blagoy even off here. I think Sakai is an excellent heavyweight, but even off's got that wrestling and he's down at AKA. He's looked very impressive within his uh um within his UFC run. I, I like his submission abilities, I like everything about him. I have not been as impressed with uh Augusto's guy. I think he's quality. But I have liked what I've seen from even off up to this point. He's a he's a tough dude with some elite wrestling, a great submission game, and quality striking. And I think he possibly can get Sakai down to the mat and do some things like that. I like even off's upside better than I do um, Sakai's. Although Sakai has well, it's finishing Marcin type of that great. Ah. Uh, it finished Chase Sherman. I guess Sherman is tough, you know. But um, yeah, I, I like I like both sides of this. Maybe I should like Sakai better. He's been a better finisher. But I'm gonna have exposure to both. I think this, especially in this small octagon, I think this fight is gonna score very well. Divine Prodigy, what do you say? I don't like this fight at all. Um, I hope you didn't just say you like this fight to this fight. I really do. Um. But at the same time, I w I'm not going to play this fight more than likely. Um, I do favor Blagoy Ivanov to win. I think that guy, he's just tough as they come. I've, I've never really liked Sakai. I think Sakai is, 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 a ter is, is pretty terrible. Like he's, he's meat and potatoes, but I don't think he's a UFC caliber fighter. I don't know how he keeps getting these wins in the UFC. I mean, he beat Andre Avalovsky, so I guess that counts for something. But at the same time, um, I, just, I just don't think he's really good. Even in even in when his when he was in Bellator, I didn't think he was any good. Um, Blagoy Ivanov is 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 very crafty. He 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 pretty much pisses me off as well. But I, you have to give props to it's due. Blagoy Ivanov knows how to win a fight. He knows whether even if his his inactivity on the standing or striking, he can he he knows I guess when to turn it on striking wise when to turn it off. His wrestling is very underrated. 
Um, I really don't even want to talk about this fight more. Uh, I don't like I don't like the matchup. I don't like Sakai. I don't like. You don't like he, heavyweights in the small octagon. I, I, like, I don't like how. He, no, I don't think this fight will finish. I don't like how Sakai keeps winning in the UFC because he's a bum. Um, I like Bogoy even off and at eight thousand, I would be more inclined to play Bogoy. But no, uh, this fight is. I won't be playing this fight at all. If it turns out to be a key fight, then I'll I'll have to suffer that loss. But I don't think it will be. All right, let's get on to our main event. We got Tyron Willie versus Gilbert Burns. And uh, I don't have to explain why this fight has fantasy appeal. Um, I mean, I guess Woodley fights don't necessarily always have fantasy appeal. But I think him and Gilbert Burns are going to get after it. I'm picking Gilbert Burns to win. I just think that uh, Gilbert Burns' win over Damian Maya was, uh, it was interesting to say the least. It was uh it, it told me that I think Gilbert Burns is the future man. This dude looks on who stops Damian Maya with strikes? Not too many people ever. Um like Nate Marquardt was the last person to do that, I think. That's ridiculous. Uh seventy four hundred dollars for uh Gilbert Burns. Woodley, somebody I think somebody's gonna get put to sleep here. I love this fight. I think he has an excellent chance to be on the winning lineup. Uh, I think it will. Uh, I'm getting exposure to both sides. I like Burns better though. I like Burns better, honestly. Um, you don't have to play Gilbert Burns, but I no, no, no. I like I like this fight. I think there's potential for it not to score the best because Willie's got that power, and Burns is gonna be careful, but. Yeah, I'm picking Gil Burns, man. I just that Damian Maya win told me something sp specialist for him. Uh, Divine Prodigy, what do you think? Um, Tyron, Tyron, I'm going Tyron Woodley all day. Um, Tyron Woodley's gonna hurt this man. He's gonna he's gonna he's gonna hurt uh he's gonna hurt Gilbert Burns bad. Gilbert Burns does not have the power to scare Woodley. He doesn't have the pressure to scare Woodley. He doesn't have the wrestling to scare Woodley. Um, you, when you see Woodley lose as of late, it's to it's to it's to you know Kamaru Usman. You know it's the people who can put that who can neutralize him and and put that pressure and that pace on him. Um, you, like Kamaru Usman and his and his fight stayed on him the whole entire time just, and just wrestled him, tired him out. What 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 part of what part of uh, what part of what part of Gilbert Burns' game is he gonna excel in? It, it can't. It, it ain't gonna be with wrestling. It, it's not gonna be with wrestling. Um, cause we know that. Uh, we know that Tyron Woodley's wrestling is is impeccable. Honestly, he rarely ever uses it. He uses it in reverse, but we know that his wrestling is there. Last time we seen him use it was, was against Darren Till, and we saw how that fight played out. Um, the the power, the power. Now, granted, granted, granted. That Gilbert Burns is getting way better with his striking. He, he is getting way better with his striking. Working with Henry Hoof, I think that was a great camp change because uh, a great camp for him. Because when you have the wrestling game or your submission game or your ground game already down pat, you look for Henry Hoof to 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 get that 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 striking game up to par. Now, granted, like I said, Gilbert Burns has been looking very good very good lately, but this is biting off way more than he can chew. He he doesn't have enough. To 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 take on Woodley, he really really does it. What part? What part is he gonna excel and beat Woodley at? How's he gonna tire him out? If, if you're looking for him to tire him out, what type of pressure is is Woodley gonna be scared of? What type of one punch knockout power? You think? I mean, you look at Damian Maya. You say, who 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 knocks out Damian Maya? The Tyron Woodley put on the clinic against Damian Maya. Um, granted, he was he really wasn't looking to knock him out. Honestly, he put a few punches on him. But it doesn't seem like he was looking to knock out Damian Maya. The same way Kamaru Usman put on a beating on Damian Maya. Kobe Covington put on a beating on Damian Maya. Everyone beats Damian Maya now when you're so one-dimensional and everyone knows what you're going to do. He's going to come in for the takedown. If the takedown defense isn't up to par, he's going to knock you out. I mean, he's going he's gonna to submit you if it isn't up to par. If your take defense is, is, is somewhat decent and it's up to par, you're going to beat Damian Maya every single time. He's going to tire himself out. Gilbert Burns, of course, he's not even a natural 170 pounder. He's he's 155. He's moving up, of course. He's been up here. He, I guess, he feels good. But this this is, this is I think people are forgetting who Tyron Woodley is. 
I think y'all are really forgetting who Tyron Woodley is. This is the man who's coming in here with no injuries. Um, he's going to be fully healthy. He's going to be fully focused. Um, Gilbert Burns has been calling him out, of course. Um, this is five rounds. You might say, hey, you no, know, Tyron Woodley gets tired and stuff like that. Tyron Woodley has been five rounds plenty of times. T Steven Thompson was twice on twice on occasion with Steven Thompson. He beat Steven Thompson. So, I mean, I, I think people are just forgetting. And I think in this fight, he'll make people remember that this I am still Tyron Woodley, man. I, I still do not lose, but to the best of the best. I mean, Nate Marquardt, that was that was pretty a, a pretty terrible loss. They were to fight again right now. We know how that would be, honestly. But he, this this is Tyron Woodley. Why are y'all disrespecting that man like this? It's not disrespect. Kamal, it's respect Kamal, to the abilities of Burns. Where does he beat him? Where does he beat him? Where does Gilbert Burns beat? Standing where? Where? Boxing. I mean, they wearing four ounce gloves. Anybody, anything can happen. Oh yeah, and you just think uh, Willie has no chin, huh? No, I'm not saying that. I, I just think Gilbert Burns is a hell of a fighter. So, 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 does, so, whose chin is better between the two, Tyron Woodley or Gilbert Burns? I would say I don't know. I'm just picking yeah, Gilbert no, Burns. I like his recent performances better than Woodley. We, we can ask. We can ask Dan Hooker. Who knows? He, he knows. He knows. Oh, and of course, you got this. You got this small cage. We know that Tyron Willie, I hate it. We know that Tyron Willie likes to back up against the cage. I hate when he does it. I really, really do. But we also know that whenever he backs up against the cage, that right hand that he can, you know, launch and from that, from that, from that um, backwards pose, he launches that right hand like there's no other. And of course, if you're Kamaru Usman or something like that, you can neutralize that because you know the wrestling. You make him tired. You make him scared to put that that arm out there, but. Gilbert Burns, he, he, he's not built like this. This is this is a terrible matchup for Gilbert Burns. Terrible matchup. I don't know why he wanted this fight. I mean, I get it. He's trying to, you know, impress the UFC. I'll fight anybody, anytime, anywhere. But at the same time, now he has to literally back up those words. And this is not Damian Maya. This is Tyron Woodley. It's a terrible matchup. Man. Woodley's going to put this man out on skates. Maybe. On the skates. Maybe he'll back up against the cage again and quit. Like old oh, Willie oh, used to do. God. Hey, look, look. Yeah, out of Kamar Usman and Gilbert Burns, I'm not fearing Gilbert Burns. <sighs> let's go on to our next. Uh, let's go to FanDuel real quick. Um, we've gone through all the analysis, which is kind of transferable. But let's go over FanDuel, FanDuel scoring. Of course, they had takedown defense. This is a thing over here on FanDuel. I don't know if any fighter is necessary. Oh, Elliot versus Roy Val is an excellent fight in, in that sense. Um, is FanDuel even filled in the UFC tournament this week? Oh, yes. I'm tripping. I was about to say. Okay. But I like Roy Val versus Elliot in the captain slot. Um... That should have a lot of takedown scrambles, reverses. Want to get one of those guys in your captain slot? And then I guess the same. And uh, who else do I like as a captain? I like um, Quarantillo or, or or Spike Carlisle as a captain. I want to stay away from Woodley and Burns as captains. I want to get to Roosevelt Roberts. I think is an excellent captain. Yeah. Yeah, everything else, all the analysis for FanDuel is pretty much the same for DraftKings, except I like the the, the grappling in uh, Elliot versus Roy Val. Lots of one thing, one thing and everything like that. On, what? One thing that's interesting on FanDuel, of course, if you if you if you just compare the prices, you know, on DraftKings you have Mackenzie Dern is ninety three hundred, which is the most expensive, but on FanDuel, I guess you get a discount. She's like what nineteen dollars. I mean, that's I guess that's kind of only thing I find. A little bit interesting to have Tyron Woodley as the highest price fighter. But of course, I guess with these different sites, you know, the way they play out, a discount is a discount. So I mean I think you can like Mackenzie Dern in that in that MVP MVP spot. Especially, you know, when this gives out uh submission attempt, they give out submission attempt points. So you know that Billy Q, I like that Billy Q call as well. So, you know. You gotta you gotta play the system over here. Yeah, so my relevant captains are Roberts. 
Uh, Casey Kenny, don't let me forget about him. He's a relevant captain. But Tim Elliott, Roy Bowles, that's like my favorite fight. I think that was gonna break off. So I love them as captains, and not Willie Burns. I'm not on that one as far the captain slide. I want to get off that. But Quarantillo, Kenny, Elliott, Roy Val, and Roberts. Those are my favorite captains on FanDuel. And then every day, all the analysis over on the. Uh, uh, draft uh, DraftKings is transferable. Remember, the scoring is a wee bit different with the takedown defense, takedowns and stuff. So, yeah. Uh, if you think somebody's going to stuff a lot of takedowns, which would probably be Roy Val or somebody like that, then get him in there. That's going to do it for this edition of Black Market Picks. Next week, I think I'm going to bring back the premium content. So, get ready for that over at NegroJitsu.com. And, uh... I wish you guys all the best of luck. That milli. That milli. Oh, yeah. For a million dollars next week. Never thought I'd see the day.